Number 10, an electron moving at four times 10 to the three meters per second in a 1.25 Tesla magnetic field experiences a magnetic force of 1.4 times 10 to the minus 16 Newtons. What angle does the velocity of the electron make with the magnetic field? There are two answers. All right. So first of all, if we notice everything we're given, right, we're going to be using then the formula that the force on a moving charged particle will equal the charge, the magnitude of the charge of that particle multiplied by the velocity of that particle, multiplied by the magnetic field that that particle is experiencing as it is moving, multiplied then by the sine of the angle between the velocity vector and the magnetic field vector. Okay, so how do I find theta? Well, I gotta know all these four variables. And it turns out that we do, okay? So watch what I'm gonna do. I'm gonna divide out now the QVB. Okay, and we get a nice little formula here that looks like this. All right, now let's just plug in our values and let's get an answer, okay? So uh, the force here is 1.40 times 10 to the minus 16th. The charge, what's the charge? <gasps> they didn't give it to us. Well, they told you it's an electron though. You have to know this, that an electron's charge is technically 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19 coulombs. However, though, when you plug in this number, please don't plug in the negative sign. All right. Uh, technically, the charge here should have an absolute value sign. The book doesn't have it. Not sure why, but you're just plugging in the magnitude. Okay. So just type in, no, well, write it. Well, I'm not even typing. I don't know. Just, just write down 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th for the charge. The velocity they told us was going to be 4 times 10 to the 3. And then the um, magnetic field strength that is in Tesla, so that there's no conversion necessary here. Okay, sine of theta. So just do me a favor, let's just calculate that. So 1.4 times 10 to the minus sixth, uh, times 10 to the minus 16th, excuse me, divided by now parentheses, 1.6 times 10 to the minus 19th, times four times 10 to the third, times then 1.25. All right. So I get an answer here now of 0 0.175 is equal to now sine of theta. So the way we now have to solve for the angle is like this, okay? You have to find just theta, not sine of theta, okay? Um, so what we now need to do is we are going to take the inverse sine of both sides, right? So what will happen is this. When I take the inverse sine of this, sine minus one of this whole thing. The signs basically cancel and what I'm left with is just my theta, okay? But whatever I do to the right-hand side, I better also do to the left. So I gotta type that into the calculator. So type in, do hit second sine of 0.175. Second sine of 0.175. Make sure, by the way, that you are in degree mode, okay? Please. So this is now going to be 10.1 degrees, all right? Keeping that rounded nicely to three sig figs. So now here's the thing, okay? Um, the calculator only gives you one answer, uh, but they said that there's two. All right, so technically you can think about it this way. So here's one answer. And what happened to the, <laughs> oops, I took some letters along with it. So here's, here's one of the answers, okay? Now bear with me for two seconds. So let's draw our magnetic field lines. Let's point them to the right, okay? Doesn't matter where you point them, but I'm gonna point them to the right. Now, let me draw my velocity vector, okay? Let's pretend the velocity vector is pointing in this way. Let me make it a little more dramatic. I don't think that changed at all, but okay, you get the end, you get the point. Now, this angle here that we just calculated represents the angle between the magnetic field vector, right, which is B here, and the velocity vector. Can you tell me which of these four angles that I'm gonna draw in represents, do you think logically represents the 10 degrees? You might say, well, Andrew, two of them do, and I'd agree with you, right? Doesn't matter. This one or this one represents, because they're right vertical angles or whatever the heck that term was that you learned in ninth grade, right? Who cares? Um, those angles are equivalent. Right, and that in the picture looks to me like about 10 degrees-ish, 
Okay. But wait a minute. If that's 10 degrees, okay, then what is this angle right here? Well, that would have been 180 minus the 10 degrees approximately, right? So if you plug it into the calculator, 180 minus that value, you're going to get 169.9213 blah, 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 blah. Okay. So that's going to work out to about 170. Okay. Now, yeah, 170, 169, depends on how you subtract these things um, in terms of significant figures, but quite honestly, who cares? So let's just say this is about 170. Okay. You think scientists are actually doing this, right? With sig figs? Come on now. <laughs> Let's all be realistic. Um, so um, it's about 170 degrees. Now the thing is, either angle would have given you the same value, okay, from the calculator. Either the 10 degrees approximately or the 170, okay? So if you were to type in, watch, type in, go to your calculator, type in sine of 10 degrees. What do you get? You get about 1.736, right? It's not the exact 1.75 because I'm rounding it now, right? I'm just saying 10 degrees, okay? I'm making it simple. But now do me a favor, type in sine of 170. What do you get? Wait a minute, the same number. That's the whole point. <laughs> there's two values here that will give you, there's two values for this angle. Right here, there's two values for this angle that will give you the same answers. It's going to be 10, about, technically 10.01, and then it will be about 170, okay? So anytime you have to find the two angles, just simply draw your little picture, right? Just like this, just point the field to the right, the velocity at an angle, all right? And then whatever angle you find here, it will represent the acute angle in there. It might be 30 degrees, so you'd maybe angle that line a little more, it doesn't matter, okay? All you then gotta do is take that acute angle, subtract it from then uh, 180, and then what you would do is you would find that complementary angle, all right, and you'd be able to go about your business, okay? Those are the two angles. So here you have this, and then about, you know, 170 degrees, uh, maybe it should be 169.9 considering the rounding. It doesn't, honestly, who cares? <laughs> who cares? Um, but that's about it, all right? Those are the two angles. So anyway, Guys, thanks so much for tuning in. Appreciate it. Hopefully that helped. Please remember to help us out and subscribe if you can. We really do appreciate it. It allows us to continue uh, producing more videos for you. And um, yeah, look forward to helping you with more. All right, take care.